everyone, we're up to the next bit of Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Now, so far, uh, I added a bit on the front here, and I've got all my pieces, but I've actually sewn some in, so I just thought I'd go through that. So I've got the first two pages, now they'll be sewn together. I had it one spare little page here, so I've folded it back and I'm going to put the name of all the stitches here and the name of all the stitches from the two samplers. So this one will be sewn together. And I had put January on here as a tag, but what I realized was I'd put it on the right hand side, so I couldn't put it on this side. So I've left this blank because I might end up putting something else there. So, so far, February will go here and these will be sewn together. So that's where we are with this. Now for February, so I've got my the little backing of the tag. February I have put a couple of um, bits of neutral backgrounds. So I'm just going to start with that. Just do a little down stitch I think for now so I've got my normal um, this all my backings are a little bit of tablecloth and then I put my pieces over the top now so far I decided for neutral to have whites and antique lace kind of looks that should keep it in line with my last one as well so I'm just these all down. I'm not doing a very big stitch so they will be able to be left in if I like. No reason not to leave them in if they're small enough. And I don't know what else um I guess the next part is going to be a flower. So the background is neutral, so that's what the heading was. And I think it was fancy flowers. I forgot to look just before I was videoing. So fancy flowers. Could mean anything. Flowers can be made with material, embroidery, um, or like Sarah did, cut out flowers from a thicker bit of material or upholstery, something like that. Now what I've put here this was part of a square napkin and so it has this nice little dotted line along the edge so I thought I'll keep that there adds a bit of interest another bit of napkin here or tablecloth that might have been Oh no, that was a napkin, and it's got that edging there too, and I thought maybe I'd put it that way, but when I was pinning it down, I really liked it that way, with that rough edge there. Now I'm not putting on the little February tag till the end because I, I know from experience I can 
pin it down one way and think that's how it's going and then I get to do the next bit and it changes everything. So at the moment, the little February tag will not be going on yet. Well, I'm quite happy with just using a, this white, which is this one. Uh, just, what's it say? Oh, it doesn't say what it is, it just says white. It's reasonably thin, but it's not too glossy. Now, it's a little hard to do any more than tacking down when you don't know what is coming next. But definitely I want to have a look at it once it's tacked down and see exactly how it's going to be. This is a bit of the um, doily that I used on the last one and a few other things. This bit is a bit of um, the corner of a tablecloth or um, actually no, it was a set of, um, you know, the little centrepiece and the side table-y things, that, that sort of a thing. It's a bit of that. And I liked it because it had a flower on it. Let's see, I might just snip that bit off. Of course, it's always good to be able to get it so you can take off the um, pins. Not quite at that stage yet. I probably am for that one, maybe that one, but not for the rest of these. So I might just for this bit, just go back down a bit, just to keep a, a straight stitch kind of pattern going there. And then maybe come back up again, as we get closer to the edge, so as I've got that rows of stitches pattern happening. So I don't want to do too much in the flower bit. Oh, there's just two stitches there. I guess we can have one stitch there like that. Because it is the background, so we don't want to make it too obvious, unless that's what it looks like it should have. Once I work out what I'm doing with the flower. Now I've got to come 
down. Just tacking this down and on. I want that that to come up over that bit. So I'm going to come down here. that pin out. Now I can secure this bit of doily over the top of that one. I suppose I could have used white or an antique thread to sew it up. There is more white than that antique-y creamy. It's not really cream is it? sticking up a bit let's just pull a stitch there back down in here All right so I'm not doing big 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 stitches even though I, I consider that it's tacking um, I actually don't think I'm taking this out I think I'm just small tacking and leaving it. Okay, nearly finished. Just love that little moment when you can take the pins out. It's very satisfying. Do another row here. Because then it can just stay there like that. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. No, maybe I'll pull this one back to the back. Like that. This one here. And we'll just do a line up here. Just secure this line then I consider that my background is ready to be worked on there we go okay that's ready for me to think about flowers and things. So with the, just show you. Down. So this is a piece of tablecloth or pillowcase or something like that, um, which I find quite interesting. And what I did with this was put it like that and then somehow folded it back in and then stitched Jan for January. So this one will be going here so they line up and I'll be just putting Feb. So as, as I say I could just stitch this onto here and do that as one little project without having to even worry about my um, panel because I just want these two to line up and then my panel will be put on after. So all I did for that, before I even sewed it onto anything, 
was, as soon as I use the water erasable. So I just do Feb. Let me look. I don't know that it matters what. I think I use this. I might use the same one to keep it. And I just did a little sort of, well, it's just a back stitch really. I didn't do any other stitch. Back stitch. And I think I used two strands because I wanted to keep it thin. So the water erasable ones, I find that if you give it a really good dunk and then a bit of a rub and then a bit of a squeeze to get the water out and then you just let it dry, that it comes off really well. It's just like the heat erasable ones. I didn't actually realise that you could, um, that you used an iron on the back for it to disappear. So we, we learn, we're learning all the time, live and learn. All right, so once this little February is done, we'll, we'll have it fairly ready. All right, so I just did basically a stitch. So a long line like that, I'd do two stitches. And come back in, back stitch, stitch to the top. Doesn't matter if you don't exactly match the letters that you've got there, the, like the blue pen, because um, it'll wash, be washed off. So what will be left will be the, the sewn word. Okay, I might just do a little bit longer on that top line. The main thing is that you can read it. Okay, just coming to the end of the B and what I'll have to do straight after I've finished it will be to wash it and then let it dry. And I guess I could iron it, but I generally will dry it overnight. have it. Okay, imagine what it will be like when it's washed and the blues disappeared and then it will match the January. It'll go like that. So that's where I'm up to with the backing. I wanted to show you a book. Okay, so this is Art Australia, which has got a whole heap of different artists that have been at the art gallery. And this is predominantly Del Catherine Barton, who is one of my favourite artists. Uh, but in here, right, so she uses a range of textures, mostly painting. I thought you'd be interested to see the bunny, the flower, flower, right, but 
main person I wanted to show you in here was Jessica Rankin who does a lot of stitch work. So uh, I was really enjoying the fact that this looked like the stitched type looks like that computerish sort of futuristic type of typeface. Love that. But also this star flower sort of pattern. That's something to think about because we're doing flowers. So fancy flowers. Who knows? Is it fancy? It's up to you. What do you think is fancy? Anyway, mostly I was loving hers because I was loving the, the way it's like maps and text. Not so much flowers. So, I uh, don't know if there's anything else. It's always a mixture of a whole heap of things. These funny little animals. Not specifically flower um, oriented. But always these, well look at that. These look like flowers on a tree and they're little faces. Probably little cherubs or something, because this is a Rupert Bunny picture. The morning hymn it's called. It's probably a bit small to see, but the flowers in the tree are little cherub faces. I always just think that an art book is always inspiring. You just don't know what else is in here. Let's just see what's before Del Catherine Barton's. I just love, I love her work. I just love it, it's so interesting. Lots of um, tiny line work, watercolor. Well, it's actually a lithograph, so she's print made, made it. So this is one thing I wanted to show. Just having a quick squiz through in case there's anything floral. Or maybe we're just getting off the beaten track here. Right, so there's, there's a, looks a bit like a rose. It's got a thorn. No, so that's a different look for flowers. Even this one, the sort of the um, the dot painting of the indigenous, that's almost like a field of blossoms, isn't it? This is another one of my favourite artists, Emily Kamikanware, um, and she often uses very very bright pinks. Beautiful work. Um, oh, she's not here with us anymore, sadly, but her relatives are, and they're doing some lovely work too. All right, I don't know if there's any more flowery, re flower representations. No. These are... Louise Bourgeois, Bourgeois, I think that's how you pronounced it. Fabulous work. I saw her exhibition in um, New York. It was the collective of all her works. I was just so lucky to be there at that time. Um, she's not particularly a floral person though. More like spiders and phallic kind of symbolism. All right, there's real flowers, <laughs> but we're looking for flowers in tapestry. Okay, so I haven't really found anything else that might be inspiring. All right, so this, though, his big, large scale flowers in a kind of a um, jungle kind of, it's almost like a museum exhibition, isn't it? I don't know if it says, I can't find. It looks like they're, they may be made of felt and some sort of a fluffy like cotton wool or something like that. But this, this is using, this installation's using a lot of things. Stuffed animals and all sorts of things. All right, so here's a couple of Del Catherine Barton's flowers. So I didn't think she did many flowers, but here is a couple. 
hibiscus. So it might be interesting even to look at what sort of flower, what does it represent in what you're doing? What's, what work do you want to portray? What's the emotion of it? All right, well, there, that's that book. So that's it for this part, part one out of our second panel. And I'll be back and I'll do the flower and or fl flower or flowers and attach the tag. Hope you enjoyed having a little look through that book as well. And I will speak to you soon. Bye for now.